Well, we will cover that yeah, topic okay. and more. Okay. Hello. Hi. Happy Friday. Welcome to Sprinkle Pods. I'm There's so happy to be here. I love, I've been watching. Uh, come on, We're Marla. having fun. Okay. My name is Marlo Rutz. I realized I needed to say that because some people don't know. Some people, hi, YouTube. Some people that are joining from YouTube, they just join in and they've never seen this or oh, me or any, any of us. Before, so are the red so. checks. Are the red yes oh, terry, terry miller, miller is on youtube yep, hi girls so yeah i'm marlo rutz and this is my friend jen Bay. Hi. yeah and we're doing sprinkle pods tonight thank you so much for being here thank you for inviting me we were thank just for pulling my name i love it that's yeah. what i do that's how that's how i know i have a a big group of women that have said yes to doing this i have their names i should have brought my bag down i put their name in a little bag and then i start a video and i send them a video as i pull the it's name like powerball live. It's like Powerball. Yes, yes that's it is. What I, when you sent me the video, I felt like I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it, I knew it was going to be me already, but I still was like, oh my gosh, I wonder who it's going to be. Who's it going to be? <laughs> you guys, we have been sitting here cracking up. We are already having so much fun and we can't wait to dive in. Um, I just said to Jen, I said, we just need, we need to be just who we are and have a blast. Cause you know what? It's Friday night. It's Friday night. Who doesn't need fun on a Friday? I do. I need fun on a Friday. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you know what? You know, what's crazy. Hmm. This is the first sprinkle pot. Well, it's only the third sprinkle pot. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it is the first sprinkle pot I've done where the sun is out. Oh, because yeah. of daylight savings. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. sunny. It's sunny down here in the cubby hole. And for those it's of you practically that, summer, it's practically summer. For those of you that don't know what the cubby hole is, you don't know what sprinkle pods are all about. Um, so sprinkle pods are um, a chance to glorify God. That's the number one goal. So a while back, I was blessed to be able to sit alongside Jesus and write this book called God Sprinkles. You can find it on Amazon. I'm telling you that because some people said to me, um, you may want to mention how you get the book. The book. Some it, people, it's important. Some people are like, what? What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. What is a spring? Get book? it. It's a good book and you can journal in it. You can, you can answer questions. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's my stories. I call them sprinkle pods, sprinkles. God sprinkles are the, it's the providence of God. It's the supernatural of every day. God showing yeah. up in the supernatural of every day. Yeah. Those coinky dinks. Yes. Those coincidences. Yes. Some people call uh, them God winks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Jen's right. There's a story. There's a short story, lots of short stories about how God sprinkles showed up in my life. And then in every chapter, there is, there's a scripture and then there's devotional questions and there's space for you to write in journal so you can start telling your own story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so sprinkle pods, we use that, the book as a jumping off point for me to have a guest yeah. on. And then we talk about how something in your life that might, you might've related to in the book, but then we don't talk about the book anymore. We talk about the person's story and how we can glorify God through their story. Yeah. Can I say hi to a couple of people? Yes, would you? I want to say hi to Mel Brewer. Mel Brewer, she's hi, Mel. on very often, and, I I, and she's watching. So do you know her? She's oh, so absolutely. Yeah. I've known Mel yeah. for a long time. And then Betsy, I'm, I'm going to meet her someday. Yes. I haven't yes. met her, but I'm going to meet her one of these days. And She said today she's excited to meet you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, and Francie Rains is often on, and Leslie, Leslie. and Rettina. Leslie. Spence Bay. Spence, Spence Bay. Jen's husband. Okay, I'm going to tell you. poked me in the eye with I this. Am so... <laughs> That's how David points to things in the car. He just so, yeah. scares me. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Jen's husband, Spence uh, Bay, is on right now. And we I have to tell you, I just took a screenshot of Jen on the phone with him because she he called. Yeah, is it okay he, to share this? Yes, it is okay, okay to share. Okay, I yeah. should have asked. Yeah. No, it's what okay. What are you calling about? Um, well, <laughs> I, I, it's St. Patrick's weekend. So I didn't even put that together. Obviously, I'm going to make... Corned beef. And what else would you and do? Cabbage. Your hands are tied. My house smells so bad right now. <laughs> only because of the cabbage. Yeah, only because of the cabbage. But um, so yeah, he I'm doing I do it in my Instapot. And so I very quickly just told him what to do next with the cabbage. And so we had to walk through that one more time. Yeah. But he's got it. It's gonna be delicious. And um I don't know. I I did have to ask Marlo though, do I smell like corned beef? It, in, as I say, in all fairness with the Instapot, that takes a little instruction. And then we're it sitting does. here. It does. And also you if you do it wrong, you can blow up your house. <laughs> you guys it's a we're big, sitting here. It's actually a big deal. It's a big, very big deal. And he's doing well. She's sitting yeah. here on the phone, she's talking to Spence, and she goes, Do I smell like corned beef? <laughs> you do not. <laughs> I had thought about it. I thought but about it. I you have to it. know. What yeah. are you going to do? Go through your life and not And I don't know. know if like, if you had told me I smelled like corned beef, I'm not really sure what I was going to do about it in that moment. Well, it luckily was too it's not... late. It is what it is, but <laughs> I did want to know. Luckily, it is um, not smell of vision and they can't smell. So yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Let me, you know what I'm going to do? I always love to start by uh, 
praying and then we'll, we'll, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to cannonball into okay. your story or okay. whatever God puts on oh, our hearts. Okay. Yes. Okay. Father God. Oh, what a beautiful, gorgeous Friday night it is. Thank you so much for this time with my sweet friend, Jen Bay. Thank you for this chance to glorify you. We were just saying before we got started, when we were praying that, you know, there's somebody out there on this Friday night that just needs some laughter mm -hmm. and they need, they need some company showing up wherever they are on their computer or their phone. And they just, they can use some, some hope that can only come from you, Lord. And that is, that is the reason that we're here to glorify you, to talk about your beautiful, your beautiful light, your beautiful Holy Spirit that is available to every one of us. And what more could we ask for on this beautiful Friday to be able to receive your joy versus happiness, your pure joy that is in our heart only because of you. We love you. We praise you. And we cannot wait to glorify you with every word in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Yes. Um, I do want to say yes. because oh, there's Carrie. Oh my Hi, gosh, Carrie. did you put that up there? That's uh, so funny. No. I didn't. I don't care. I, that. I would have put her up there, but oh, I didn't yeah. even see. Oh, it. She's, she's, <laughs> she's just gonna get. She's getting honest. So while, but yeah. I it must have just automatically gone up because while we were praying, yeah, I, well, I must have hit she, it needed to go up. She's and she's being honest. She's just being honest. But I, you, I just smell like cabbage for sure. <laughs> Um, I do I want to say I want to say to Leslie if you're still on here. I've been praying for you, and she she it has an injury, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. she does, Leslie. Yeah. Oh, so my goodness. I've been thinking about you a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. So love you, yeah. Leslie. Yes, we're praying for you. I did yes. not know that you have to fill me in on that. I will. I will. Yeah. Oh, so, well. And Colleen. Okay. I can everybody, do it. They're here. I'm, I'm the, I'm the, the gang's all here. On the, the Wednesday morning lives, I can't see the screen because it's so far away. So I'm, I'm, I might get obsessed with seeing people's you, names. And I, I will put their, okay, all you have to do is hit hard. this button. Yeah. So listen, okay. I just, speaking of seeing things, I just told Jen, just so you know, full disclosure, yeah. I'm looking at you. I can't see you. I can't, no, yeah. Unless I have my glasses on. So it's yeah. like, back up, like back up. But that I, is perfect. Can you see me now? We're going to do the whole sprinkle puzzle. There, I can see okay. you. I can see you better right now, too, but I did bring my glasses. Just so, so you know, I can't see you. Okay. But you you know what? That's good. I can hear you. Although That's if all you we need could to know. see me, it'd be okay because your daughter, Kailani, just recently told me I have the cleanest nostrils she's ever seen. Can you tell the people? I love this story. Kailani told her she has the cleanest nostrils she's, she's ever her seen. Her daughter, Kailani, Bible is so study. sweet. She's the sweetest thing. And every time she sees me, she goes, your skin. Your yes. skin is so... And then this time she goes... <laughs> In your nostrils. They are, and so I, clean. I've never noticed that about you. So Kailani goes to Jen's house on Mondays yeah. for Bible study. And and you know what I said? Well, you know what? It's not like you're taller than her. No, she, I'm not. She, she just, she was here. looking. She that was paying is, attention. Those are clean nostrils. Yeah. She can see you from up here. Yeah. And it's because you've got, you, you, I'm dermaplane. you dermaplane. This, this, this is not only sprinkle pods, but this is your greatest beauty tips. Tell the people, what do you do? I, it's dermaplane, a, do you have them? You get a, you can get them on Amazon and you're like, what? It sounds awful. No, no. Um, so what men call shaving their face, we call dermaplaning our oh, face. Oh, right. We're yeah, getting, we're not the, gonna, we're okay. getting the dead skin off, you know, so we're just getting the dirt, dead skin off. And then I just go. That sounds awful. It sounds like. Does it hurt? Okay. It doesn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then good. Do you hear no. that? Amazon, everybody, don't Amazon. leave, don't leave us now. But no, yeah, after, no, not right now. Just, just, yeah, wait. Right after this, right after pod. this, get to Amazon, get your dermaplane, get your skin clean. <laughs> oh, look what Rutina said. Uh, Cause I have my girl on here, Jen, 100%. 100%. 100%. That's yes. what you're saying. Yes. One. It is yeah. my goal now in the sprinkle pot to use that in a sentence again. You know that I, I've realized everyone in my house says it. It might not even be me that started it's it. Probably I don't know them. how it's been says it all the time. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of things are 100%. I did not know. 100%. Yeah. It 100% is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So should we talk about, about Let's something? Dive in. We're cannonballing. Okay. Okay. So like I said, the <laughs> what we do is we, we take something, you know, the woman that's on just talks about something that struck them in God's sprinkles, but it's not about talking about the book anymore. It's about talking about their story. So we were just chatting about this before we got started yeah. and you were saying that, well, there are a few chapters that- yeah. That struck you? Yeah. Um, definitely Steel Rod was one mm -hmm. of them because I feel like um I so the can I give I'll give everybody a read. Yeah, can, you, can you do that? Yeah, I think <laughs> you're better for the you're better for, for the job. <laughs> Let me just put my glasses okay. on. I hope they're clean. Okay. They're probably not. Okay. Oh, can I just tell you guys that Jen not and I, it's tea. Jen, <laughs> Jen and I know each other from bar, a place called Barn 45. Oh yeah. 
when you get um, when when this uh, sprinkle pod's over, if you're not familiar with Barn 45, go to YouTube or Facebook and look up Barn 45. Some people I saw people online today. They were looking for a Bible study. Uh, Barn 45 is a non-denominational. It's a heart hospital is mm -hmm. the best way to say it. So Jen and I met through Barn 45, but we are blessed to be on live every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, doing Bible study as we travel our way through Genesis. So yeah. um, I forget why I was mentioning that. I think you were just saying how we know each other. How we know each other. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Okay, so, okay. okay, so uh, 138. So uh, okay. there's, there's. oh no, we had your book. Can you grab yeah. that? Okay, so yeah. I under we underlined uh, something, a, um, a line in there that is what really struck you is your launching point. Do you want to read it? Yeah. That's why I was saying my glasses are dirty. And we discovered it because we're on Barn 45 together. And every Wednesday morning, my oh, glasses every are dirty. Single, they're so Everyone, dirty. They are. They're so dirty. No wonder I can't see you. Okay. Um, so give the recap of, of Steel Rod. No, that's not what it's called. Steel Rod. Steel Rod, yeah, so Steel Steel Rod. Rod, Steel Rod is a, a story about two women in my life. Um, and and a, one of them is a comedian who lives in Indiana. And the other is my friend, uh, Joy Lee, who is the, they built Barn 45. And they both had to have steel rods put in their back because they were literally collapsing. One of them... Um, she was struggling with her weight and she ended up having to have surgery. So she had to have a steel rod, steel rods put in her back. And then Joy Lee had issues with her spine and had to put, they had to put a steel rod, I think other, lots of other metal in her back mm -hmm. in order to li literally give them support. Yeah. And then the whole, the whole story of steel rod is how that's who God is for us. Right. He is that, that steel rod and more that is our foundation. Yeah. And so that was the, that was the jumping off. So I think that that for me, um, um, let's see, let me underline. Is this the, the sentence you're talking yes. about right here? Okay. I have my glasses now. I can read it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read this little section mm -hmm. here. Okay. Yeah. Every every chapter ends in a. It's called sprinkles of gratitude and prayer. So you're going to read like, the prayer. I feel like um, we should explain a little bit about what God sprinkles are. Oh, I did in the beginning. Oh, you did. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, I know it's the book, but did you say like? Yeah. Did you say the the tagline okay. explains what a what a, uh, a God sprinkle is? Okay. A God sprinkle is it's really it's a word that's it's called providence, and that oh, yeah, the definition of that yeah. is yeah. the supernatural. How how the supernatural of God shows up in the natural. He's revealed in the natural of every day, and that's what sprinkle pods are. They're everyday people telling their story about God showing up in their life in everyday situations. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, so this is, I'm just going to read this little, little paragraph here and then we'll just kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. But God, when God, when sprinkles like this happen, I start to say, this is so unbelievable, but really it's so believable. It never gets old seeing the majestic way your Holy spirit works. This is so at the end of each chapter, you do a gratitude and prayer. Yes. Like a little, uh -huh. So this is your prayer. This is the prayer. And by the way, the <clears> other <throat> the other woman's name was Stacy Corwin. Uh, the other woman that had the rods put okay. in her back. Yes. Okay. Um, it never gets old seeing the majestic way your Holy Spirit works in each of our each of our lives. Two women on the show back to back, so to speak, and uh, telling their powerful stories. Stories of how they each were in need of strong, dependable rescue to hold them up when they were literally collapsing. Mm -hmm. These two women, one in Indiana and the other in Michigan, have never met or known each other or one another, but their stories collided in a way that only you could orchestrate. Mm -hmm. um, and they were, so they, I used to do a show down here. This is this, uh, where we're sitting is in our basement, but it's called the cubby hole. And if you have the God Sprinkles book, there is a chapter in there that talks about the cubby hole and how it came to be and, and why I do what I do down here. But they were both on the show, uh, Coffee Chats at the Cubby Hole. And then I had made this realization is the coolest way that it happened. So, so. You want to explain it or no? You want them to read it? No, no. Yeah, it's okay. a, it's okay. in the book. Yeah, but okay. it was just it's a it was a God sprinkle. The way yeah, two, it was cool. two women. The story is very cool. Have both have steel rods in their back. So, yeah. Back so to I just I'm um for me that just kind of stuck stuck out because for this time in my life because we my family is going through a a travesty right now, mm -hmm. a storm. And you've been going through a lot of storms. Your family has, we have, we've gone through yeah. a lot of storms over the last many years. And you've gone you, through them. And you had, you had trials, you know, when you were in high school, you've had things and you never really, yeah, uh, you never really, well, I always say reveal the heel. Did you ever really even reveal, reveal it like fully to yourself and let you 
yourself? So when I, right before I graduated from high school, I had experienced rape. Mm -hmm. I had had that um, happen. And it kind of, I was that girl that was, you know, everything was going to be, um, I was going to, you know, wait to have sex until I was married. I right. went to, I grew up in a family and that really taught biblical values. Right. And, um, I, I, I love the Bible. I love mm. God. And that just rocked my world. And so after that, that was one of those times where, um, because I, my world was so rocked at that time, mm. I, um, I went kind of, I don't know how to say other, other than I went off the deep end. Mm. I did. I just went off the deep end. I went mm -hmm. off the rails. And so I did not put a steel rod in my right. bat. I did not, yeah. I did not, I collapsed. I did collapse. That was your point about relating to the, the chapter was that, that, that is the, the goal is like that met, met metaphor, that spiritual steel rod that yeah. would be in our back, in our, in our spine or yeah. in our foundation. And yeah. you were what you were steering away from that. You were stiff arming. That. Yeah. I really just went, I don't, I look back. I don't even like to be totally honest with you. I don't even like looking back at pictures of myself at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like thinking about it. I don't like, um, I went as far as to change my name. I changed my name. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I've told my kids this before. I, I, I don't officially, but just you not officially, but really? I was going to officially. Yeah. I really was going to create this new identity and it was not a healthy identity. It was, it was oh. that polar opposite of, um, of really who I was and who God created me to be. And what I knew was, right and wrong. And I just, um, do you want to say the name or you don't have to, but I, I, we haven't talked about this. If you feel like it later. Yeah. 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 I'll, maybe I'll bring it up later. later yeah. Bring it up later. But I, um, I love that about your name though. This stage right here is all about, um, you know, talking, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening with what's happening on the stage. But one of them is how God calls us by name, but we call ourselves, I mean, I know we're given a, our name at yeah. birth, but we call ourselves not only names in, in, in here, but we, we are identifying ourselves in so many yeah. ways that are not how God created no. us to be. It's, I can only imagine it, it breaks his heart when he, we really knows what we really think about ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, and I, I actually, I think that's a good point. And I actually think that does not just apply to something bad happens. And so you go off the rails and you, I think your life can look pretty good and you identify wrong. I, also that is, oh my gosh, that's such a good point. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like something's been horribly, right. You know, I've, a I, skewed I've, lens. A, any yeah, skewed lens any from skewed wherever lens. that yeah. comes from. You know, you're not, you're not listening to his, his words. You're not listening to his voice. He's not allowing him to tell you who you are, yeah. who he created you to be. And that can be in really what looks like very good times right. that that can happen too. So it can also come from, um, from conditioned, a conditioned response. My friend and I were talking about that phrase yesterday, having a conditioned response. We condition ourselves to respond a certain way because of a lot of different circumstances yeah. in our life. And then that's what we believe about. It's the response that we have toward ourselves or the response we have when we look in the mirror, the metaphorical mirror right. or any of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where I was going to go with that, I all of a sudden I'm feeling like God's just wanting me to talk a little bit about I want to veer from that just for a second. Mm -hmm. I feel like somebody um, maybe listening right now or who will listen in the future will need to, to hear this. But I, so I mentioned that I was, I was raised in a Christian family. My parents love the Lord. They still do to this day mm -hmm. um, that I went to Christian school. I went to church on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. I went to youth group and, you know, this thing happened and it took me just, like I said, I went off the rails. And so I became a prodigal and, um, can we explain that for anybody so, that doesn't know the Bible, the prodigal son? Yeah. The prodigal son and his father, there were two sons, he had two sons and one, how would you best describe it? I mean, he, he rebelled and went away. Yeah. I, well, one of my favorite stories actually in the book is about the story of Nemo from the, the, the movie Nemo. Nemo goes and swims yes. away yeah. from his father and all his father wants is for him to come back, which is God wanting us to come back. Yeah. But he had to do it on his own. And then he, 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 he that's back. the thing about a prodigal child. Mm -hmm. If you have one or if you've been one, the, the thing that I know that, um, because I was, was one, um, and I will also say I've been a prodigal child more than once. I don't think just because you come back doesn't mean you never leave again. Yeah. I, I can, you can be a prodigal. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, I, I could, I'm, like I said, I was telling Marlo that I'm clean. I feel like I'm clinging right now to the hem of Jesus and I could easily, if I just let go, um, 
go be a prodigal again. Mm -hmm. if I'm not going to because um, I'm a fighter and I'm not going to allow that to happen. And I'm thankful for the people I have in my life to help encourage me and be praying for us and all of the things. But um, And you can be a prodigal with your parents and you can also be a prodigal with God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For so, many reasons. If you, if you have if you raised your kids up in the in the faith, if they know Jesus and you know that you and they've walked away, I just want to I just want you to know that he's with them. He's talking to them. He's whispering in their ear, sometimes loudly, sometimes very quietly. But I the whole time that I was that I was living in this rebellious place of my life, I was fully aware that God was calling me back. I was choosing, I was living in my rebellion. So I was choosing to come to stay, to stay away. Um, and it was very dark. It was very dark days for me. Those were very dark days for me. Um, which are, I don't want to, I just, I'm no, so no, no. as far as what you're saying, but those, those are needed too, because, you know, we're studying Genesis at the barn and Joseph's in the pit. God does his best work in, in the pit. Yeah. And, does. and if yeah. your child is in the pit or we're in the pit, he, and I know he does beautiful yeah, work there. And it's, it's easier said than done to, to, um, I know it's not easy to just allow your kids to walk their journey, but I will say that my journey back to God, um, I have no regrets, even though it was scary. And my parents, I, you know, and as a, a mom of adult kids now, I know that that's scary and it's not um, what you want to see. I don't want to see my kids have to do that. But I I look at that time in my life and I'm so thankful that I walked away to come back. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds really contradictory to what we always say, but I am. I I could have easily no, just stayed the course actually, and, and stayed on track with where, where my parents had me. And maybe that would have been great. And maybe, you know, it would have saved us all a lot of pain, but it, it's my testimony. It's part of who I am today, who I am today. And I'm thankful for who I am today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's because it, it's, it's part of why I can be barely clinging to his hem right now and still not let go mm -hmm. because I've walked through hard hard things and done, you know, done the hard things. So can, can, can we walk that out for just a second? The clinging to Jesus's robe. I, I realize sometimes um, I, I might take for granted or, you know, or somebody, I don't know if I'm watching something, I am wondering, well, what do they mean by that? So the clinging to his robe is the woman uh, that had the issue of bleeding in the Bible. Yeah, I don't remember yes. which book it's in. Luke. Oh, it's in the book. I think of it's Luke 8. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't look it up that long ago. It's really good. Yeah. So the woman that had the issue of bleeding, she was bleeding for about 12 years and she was considered unclean and she was, it's really a state of desperation yeah. and Jesus was in the town and she walked through other people and it was kind of unheard of that you would do that. But yeah. she touched the hem of his robe. Well, he, she was unclean. Like even just her being in that crowd would yeah. have caused havoc. Mm -hmm. You know, they just saw her as, um, her bleeding would have been due to sin. She was you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So they wouldn't have they, want her, wanted right. her anywhere they near. Considered her unclean. Right. Yeah, it's even just her the being disciples, there. even the disciples yes. would have been like worried mm -hmm. about her coming mm -hmm. and talking to um, <clears throat> Jesus, much less touching his robe. But um, but that's what they people mean when they say I'm clinging to the to the robe. I'm clinging to his robe. Yeah, that's what it means. And then she was. Yeah. You know, well, and and so. I think I'm going to go into that a little bit too. Mm -hmm, I'm sorry. I, I feel like this is I complete. Have I completed any thought? It, it, you, you're, you're, yes, you're doing we're, amazing. You're I, I, we're just, we're just, okay. happy. We're just I just said, if we were at lunch, well, before we started, if we were at lunch and there was a young girl there, another woman there that needed encouragement, what would we do? We would just talk. We're just, we're just talking. We're just talking. We're just, talking. you know what we do? We should order some nachos. I do like nachos. Corned beef nachos. If Michaela comes down, I'm totally going to ask her. Yeah, you're, I'm probably making you hungry for corned beef because I smell like it. No, I am. Yeah. <laughs> you don't smell. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. I am derailing you. But, you go. Okay, so you're, no. you were going to talk about. Um. So actually, this morning, uh, Lauren talked about it on this morning's li live too. So but good. this has been something through the last three weeks specifically I've been thinking about is that. So Jesus was going to. um heal uh someone's daughter this man's daughter jairus jairus mm -hmm. jairus whatever um and on the way there this woman who had the bleeding issue she found she found her way to the robe so jesus was going to perform this big miracle for somebody else and she just all she she had the faith to just touch him and knew that he would just the power mm -hmm. of who he was she trusted who he was mm -hmm. and um that that would heal and, and, it, and she was healed for doing that um for that 
protect clinging to his robe mm-hmm. in that moment. Um, so for me, I just, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think, think of how the, how best to explain. Um, so my family has just been through a lot over the last mm-hmm. few weeks. We lost our, our, um, little nephew. He was four months, almost, not even, he was almost four months mm-hmm. old. Um, um, tragically suddenly. Mm-hmm. And so we've just been walking yes. out something that every single morning we wake up and we're like, is it, I, I texted my mom and my sister today. And I was like, every day I'm like, is it, it's real. Like it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's real. And so here I am, here I am. I'm a, um, you know, I do the barn Wednesday morning mm-hmm. lives with you and Joy and Terry. It's my favorite thing that I do. I mm-hmm. love it. Love I it love too. it so much. And I love being in the word, but here I am. And I feel like I'm just every single day having to, even though that's that I I'm serving God and I'm, um, I still find myself needing to just cling to him even with every ounce of strength I have, which is not much right now. I just don't have much strength to cling to him. Mm -hmm. So, um, I find myself needing to do that so that I don't drown. Right. Um, and there's like today I was having, I had a really, a really rough day did, today yeah, and I, I felt like I wanted to let go. I, I, I had that thought of, I want to let go of the rope. I want to, I want to let go and just mourn the way that I need to do it mm-hmm. on my own terms. And also, you know, so real, feel, like having this conversation yeah. with God of like, what, what are you doing? What do you why, want? What do you why want am from I us? It? Or do you ever like, is that what you like? Why? Yeah. It's just, you're just, it, you are explaining something that's so relatable and that's what this is all about. Yeah. Everybody goes through that. Everybody goes through that. And it doesn't matter if you're looking at somebody who's on the screen teaching a Bible study mm-hmm. or it's somebody who just found out who Jesus was today. We all go through these um, things that um, I don't know. I don't want to say we're so I don't want to say we're not protected because we are protected, but we aren't free from true real life horrific yeah. pain that is undescribable. Um, and, but what I do know is that I have the steel rod in, in, so I can stand up straight. And even though today I felt the desire to maybe even remove the rod so that I could just wallow in what this tragedy is, um, I, I didn't, and I stepped, I kept standing. Mm-hmm. I, I was able to keep standing. Is that making sense? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I don't know. What I'm it's saying. no. I mean, when you, when we think of steel rod, it's so metaphorical for so many things. I know at the barn we've been talking about God uh, ingraining the Holy Spirit ingraining. There's a there's a joy that He ingrains in our heart that I've just been explaining it lately to even my girls or you know just in conversation when it comes up that nobody can steal that away. No, N- nobody can violate that away from you, whatever has happened to you, whatever, whatever, nobody can rumor that away from you. Nobody can gossip that away from you. Nobody can cheat that away from you when it's ingrained. Yeah. And that it's the difference between, I I feel like I'm a broken record on this lately, but there's the difference between joy and happiness and happiness is based on circumstance and happenstance. Yeah. And joy is, it's the joy of the Lord. And it, we can wait, we may waver, but yeah. that is the steel rod. Yeah. I think. And that's what I, that's how I'm feeling it as we're talking. I didn't even think of that when I was writing the book, Yeah, but the steel rod is uh, that, that faith in, in Hebrews 11, one, where it talks about having faith that you can't see. Mm-hmm. And then also that, that unexplainable, but hopefully impenetrable joy that's in your heart yeah it's well, there and i we think it's to, in nehemiah where it, it says the joy of the lord is our strength that's mm-hmm. in tragedy that's when you need that like that's mm-hmm. not just everyday stuff that's like when you're when i think even when he that verse if you pull you had before that it's talking about i can't remember exactly what the story is right now but um it's talking about something that hard that's going on and it's saying and, and God is saying the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm-hmm. So that isn't necessarily what you and I love to do, which yeah. is laugh together. We do, and nothing can that's the other thing. It can't steal. I think we might have said this one time. You and I said, nothing can steal that laughter forever. No. Yeah. And if you guys have something that you know caused the the need for the steel rod, if you have the thing that you feel 
it just it's continually being tempted to be stolen from you, but it can't if you have the joy of the Lord. Put it in the comments. We we love for this to be interactive and and we love love to hear from you. So put yeah. it in the comments if you have something because we want it. This is about all of us relating, and it's just not two people sitting no. here. It's about this whole community of people. We're here to love you and support you, and that's why Jen is telling part of her story. That's why I shared these stories. It's because when we remain silent, when we, we remain a lone wolf, the enemy wins. Yeah. And that's not, that's not the goal. We want to be, you know, to say relatable things and, and all of it relating back to that anchor and steel rod of God. Yeah. And, um, you know, pray for healing Yeah, for whatever it is that someone's going through. Yeah. And I, and I think that what I've learned over the last three weeks is, or actually tomorrow's four weeks, which is unbelievable to me. Um, but what I've learned is that there is nothing that tries to rob your joy more than pain. Right. And I don't mean physical pain. I mean like, um, heart wrenching, heart right. like, like you're having open heart surgery your with heart no out pain. anesthesia yeah. kind of pain. Yes. Um, would love to. And it's, it, I, I'm struggling with even having, feeling like it, I am allowed to, not allowed, I'm struggling with even feeling like I can explain God's goodness and his kindness and the joy of the Lord in this time, because I'm, I'm, I'm in a family of, you know, 18 people or whatever, and not everybody's in that same place. Mm -hmm. I do know that, um, I, I would love to be able to explain what, how you can experience such tragedy and, tra and tragedy's not, there's no word for what is, this is, mm -hmm. there's no word. Tragedy is not a big enough word. It's, Pain is different. not a big enough word. Um, Horrific isn't there, there's not a word like I, I I almost think about this every single day like there's not a word that it's, that can def that yeah. can sum up what we're going through mm -hmm. right now, um, but I do know that he's with us and I know he's holding me up and I know he's holding my family up and the only maybe the only evidence of that is that we're breathing. Maybe that's the only yeah. evidence of the, of the mm -hmm. fact that he's holding us up right right now. Um, but it's hard to explain to people with that words. God is still with us and he allows these things to happen and we'll never understand on the side of glory why he does. And, um, but again, you know, I, I, I got, I lost my train of thought. No, I don't know. It's all yeah. perfect. The, the pain is hard to put into words and just like the joy of the Lord, you can't, I was trying to explain that this week because this week happened to be such a joy filled, Holy spirit filled. And you can't, Find it's it's hard to find words. You can you mm -hmm. can't. You can only sit in it and either on either side of it and yeah. you feel it and but know that he's there. You know, I do know that there's a lot of people watching on um I, either on Wednesday mornings or right, you know, on the on your sprinkle pods mm -hmm. that People are going through these horrific they things. Are. That's why that there there that there is beauty in I can't believe it. You're in your yes. I can't believe uh, it's like, unbelievable. The what fact that there's people like multiple, multiple, I mean just and every mm -hmm. single day I've been praying for um, people who are about to lose someone that they love deeply, right. for the mothers who are about to lose their children that, mm -hmm. you know, I've been praying for the ahead of it, God's mm -hmm. that God's with them and putting an, a rod in their, in their yeah. back, so to say, mm -hmm. um, before that happens so that they can keep standing. But yeah. Um, and I just, I love the way that this story rolled out. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember all the details, how it rolled out with just the coincidence of these two women in my life that happened to both have steel rods in their back. I mean, that alone, just the supernatural of that quote unquote coincidence that God laid that foundation in order for me to be able to capture it and then write it down. And then people everybody that gets the book can read that and just see that, that that's not a coincidence. No, that's his majesty. That's the supernatural of him. And if he can do something like a little sprinkle like that, he, he can do big things. We can, yeah. we can trust him with everything. He mm -hmm. is in every single detail. And we always talk about Romans eight twenty eight. how no matter what the good, the bad, and the ugly, he won't waste any of mm -mm. it. He won't waste any bit of it. No. No, you know, if you, you go ahead, I know we were talking about this one little in case if there's, um, we have a lull here. I can, oh, yeah, let's do read that. What, yeah. Um, there's a question at the end of you know each chapter, as I said, there's there's devotional questions where you can ponder and there's room for you to write your answer. But this one in Steel Rod says, If truth be told, and I would love to hear from you guys 
and hear your answer. If truth be told, um, okay, let me let me back up. In Steel Rod, Joy Lee talked about how she would go to church and smile and act like everything was okay. But inside, she felt like what a refrigerator would smell like if you opened it and it just, and, the, and there was chicken in there that was rotting. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? I think it was when I had her on a coffee chat to talk about that. I actually went upstairs and I actually had rotting. It was this whole coincidence. I had yeah. rotting chicken. I was like, what smells Is in that, here? So was your rotting chicken a, a God sprinkle? Or? It was a God sprinkle. Sprinkle, God sprinkles come in all forms. All forms, yeah. All of them. Sometimes they're stinky. Stinky chicken. Yeah. So that was her, th th I had already explained that in the book that she said she would go to church with a smile, but on the inside, she smelled like a refrigerator that had stinky chicken inside. So if truth be told, you feel like you show up in life like a well put together refrigerator, but inside you feel like stinky chicken. Talk that through here. And you know, what, what is that you can journal about? What is the, what is causing the stinky chicken? What is, what is the thing that's unhealed? What are you grasping to so tight, tightly? Yeah. Is it, you know, is it fear? Is it that you don't know the true character of God? Is it that you're, you're labeling yourself with the wrong name, whatever right. that might be? Yeah. Um, so that's a good question. That is a great question. And because coming on today, thinking about the coming on today and then thinking about I've done since we lost Emmett, I've done two of the Wednesday morning mm -hmm. lives and then thinking about going on. And there's this like temptation for me to pretend like I'm okay because I'm like, oh, people don't want to, you know, they don't, people don't want to hear. Oh, you lie know, of the enemy. Yeah. People don't want to, people need uplifting. People need um, everything to be okay with the people that they're listening to. And this is what, this is what's going on in my head. No, and they're going to get annoyed with me. Mm. They're going to get annoyed with me with where I'm at. And I'm not a good fake. I'm not actually a good faker. Mm -hmm. I'm not a great faker. Um, you know, you know what the, the, the abundant phrase in that is, is you, you are so honest, so beautifully honest. And everybody loves that about you. Like Betsy was saying on here and today on Facebook, she's saying she can't wait to meet you. Yeah, that was, I, I, I can't wait to meet her too. You are real. Well, we were on the barn list last Wednesday morning and Jen said, you know what? I, I wrote it in my notes. My, your, I think one of your biggest notes was just be honest. What was it that you didn't, you didn't. It was my notes. That was Your notes notes because you, you were being honest about the fact that, I don't know. I wasn't ready. You I wasn't didn't feel ready. Yeah. Everybody, you know, it's, it's, a, it feel like a lot, it could, it could feel like a lot of pressure. I gotta, I gotta say something. <laughs> I, I just feel like and, God and keeps saying show up. And I think that was in, one, in the chapter too, in part of what I read yeah. maybe, or, and that was like, just keep showing up. And um, I saw Leslie. Oh yeah. Leslie wrote, we aren't meant to be alone. We yeah. aren't. Mm -hmm. And the temptation when you're going through something is to isolate, is right. to get alone. And I, I, I'm, especially as for me, I am an extrovert. I'm fueled by people. I mm -hmm. like to be in conversation. I like to be around people. Um, for me to isolate would be so uh, tragic. Mm -hmm. It would really be, I'm not doing it, that. For other people too, because you're, you're a valuable force. You're, you're a light. Oh, you're you're yeah. sweet. And you know, and when you do, re when you, we do retreat, there's nothing wrong with that either. We have to refuel because we always talk about how you can't, yeah. serve the world. You can't serve your family. You can't serve yourself. You can't inspire anybody when your cup is empty. Yeah. Like you have a completely empty refrigerator. There's nothing to pull yeah. from, but yeah. There's... It's vital to like, I mean, to what I'm going through and what people are going through. It's vital in order um, absolutely to, to stay. Uh, I'm sorry. I lost Look who's here. Janice Pollard. Put your Janice, own. Put your. Janice. You're a hard act to follow. You and Michaela, are you kidding me? They came ready. <laughs> they, oh, you are. They came ready. You are so good. This is so. You are. Uh, this is what we're saying. You're. We can just. We're sitting here having a conversation that's so honest and just letting it flow. And you, it's in there. Yeah. You have so much wisdom and you've been through so much. So hey, Jan. Love you. Yes, love you. She says, put your oxygen mask on first. Yeah. Joy was just talking about that yeah. this week too. You know that. The whole concept of you have to put the oxy oxygen mask on 
um, yourself before you can help anybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think this is not for, this is not applied to everybody. And I totally get this, but because of where God has brought me over the last many years, especially over the last three years, especially over the mm -hmm. last one year, right. Um, for me putting on an oxygen mask, and this might not make sense to most people, but for me putting on an, an oxygen mask means to keep going, mm -hmm. to keep doing what God, he didn't, God didn't put me into the positions that he's put me into right now, unaware of what was coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. He knew what this was going to happen. He mm -hmm. knew he put me in this position um, it, whether it's Wednesday mornings or just in life in general, you know, knowing that this was, a, that this was around. And so for me, putting my oxygen mask on looks like staying in obedience to him and, and, and being accountable to somebody. I don't do well because of, I think maybe because it's, I'm an extrovert. I don't know. I don't do well if I'm not accountable to somebody. So being accountable to people on the other side of the screen or, you know, whatever my family, whatever it is, um, for me, that's that's vital. I have to put my oxygen mask Absolutely. on in order and keep, and that's part of it. That mm -hmm. keeps me in the word. It does. That keeps me in worship. That keeps me in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, it keeps me in humility. If that, not always, but um, yeah, that's what the enemy wants is for us to be alone. And yeah, you know, th there was another chapter that you said you related with, and it was Lucky Dip because that chapter talks about imposter syndrome. And the beautiful thing about this book is that it's because the beautiful thing about our lives is that it's not, they're not, they're not isolated situations. Like mm -hmm. all these God sprinkle stories, we we're living a life here. Yeah. So what you're talking about, about there was a time where you didn't allow that steel rod. Well, then you jump over to a chapter like lucky dip and it's about imposter syndrome. Like, and that, and a lot of the undertone of what you're talking about, we, well, we all go through imposter yeah. syndrome. I mean, we can do that on the daily. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we're, we, you know, we can, we, we, we may, you know, we can be confident in all sorts of things, but there's still, there's that imposter syndrome is a beast and it will creep in when you least expect it. When we're not, when we're not um, leaning on that steel rod, when we're not leaning on the joy of the Lord, but when we're just not, not even to that, when we're just second guessing ourselves, we're, we're going by the name we call ourselves or the, the, you know, the, the, the lies in our, in our mind. Yeah. So you were walking through that too, with some imposter syndrome, even, even that's why I love your honesty on the barn, because you're countering imposter syndrome by saying, Oh, I'm calling that out enemy. I'm going to yeah. say, I'm going to tell these people, I don't either, I don't feel prepared or I don't know what to say. Gorgeous. That's why women love you. Well, yeah, that, yeah, I, thank you for the saying mm -hmm. that because that felt, I walked, that was one of those days I walked away and was like, Oh, you know, what am I doing? I shouldn't have been as honest as I was, but that's another, that, that's am. part of the, that, that's part of it too. It's yeah. another lie of the enemy. People don't know, they, people relate when they, when they, when they know that you see them and get them without ever saying it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, I think it's always a, I think we were talking, I don't know if you were talking about this on the live or not, but I think when you're going through anything, anything mm -hmm. in, in your life. And it's really easy to want to pick up some of those old things. And that is being an imposter for mm -hmm. me. I mean, I'm never going to go back to changing my name um, like I did before, but I went that far, you know, I did, went that <laughs> far with it. Like that is did you just, just have people calling you something different. Yes, I did. I went to school and I, did your parents know, or it was they not, did, they did because I have a group of people that I don't get to, I don't see them as much as I used to. And I, I wish I saw them more, but who still call me Sam. That was, a, it was Samantha. It was Sam. I was going to be, I was going to change just, my name. You're just going to switch it up. Yeah. And, and also I was going to spell it right. And then I was going to be able to get my name on pencils and barrettes and things like that. Cause my, my Jennifer name is not spelled right. We we discussed this. I Very just learned that the other day. Yeah. One N. One N. And people are always thrown by one N, one F. I didn't know there was ever two Fs in the, no, in the name Jennifer, but no. um, they're That's... like, so it must be two Fs. I'm like, no, nope, seven letters. So your locker, <laughs> did you change your, your the name? No, Everything. this was post high school. This okay, was post, right after. You changed yeah. your name. I changed my name. It was, it is, okay, I can laugh about it because I'm sitting here with you and we can like, I can like laugh about it. It is actually it a really humiliating part of my life. Mm -hmm. It really, like, I Tell hate talking about it. I hate thinking about it because it was such a dark, it was such a dark place that I was at in order to go to a place where I would change my name. Like, what, like, what was I, what was I, 
I actually, I don't even want to get into the head of what I was. I don't honestly. I just I just um, and I went up north. I went to school. I went to school in Traverse City for a semester, and I literally slept and I ate, and that was maybe all. you needed that. I did. I did. It wasn't healthy, but I came back and I I like I know that that whole six months that I was gone, my mom and dad were just praying over me constantly and worried. And I came home and I felt, re I did feel heavy. I felt heavy, but I also felt like, okay, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. Which I always say is that's a, you're describing the beauty in all of it. Like we, we can beat ourselves up. We can have the imposter syndrome and say, oh my gosh, it was, I mean, it, it was, I mean, that's there, there's beauty there's beauty that comes from the darkness. Yeah. The beauty for ashes, like we discovered yeah. on the beach in Mexico. Actually. Yeah. Like that, that scripture in Isaiah. Yeah. But there's value in every ounce of it, even though we don't feel it at the time. And even the memory of it, 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 it's hard to think about that time, but he doesn't waste anything. And the value is you got to see the contrast. Yeah. By, by remembering that there's, a, there's, Right. Yeah. Like, I don't want to am for you, but, but no. Yeah. I, the contrast is because I'm a laugher. I love to laugh. I love my, I come from a family of, we're all funny. Everybody's funny. We laugh you a lot. Funny. You make Thank me you. laugh. I, <laughs> we, we were laughing our heads off before we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. Um, but I was, you know, I, I, I like to wear color. Like I wasn't wearing any color. I like to, Wear sparkle eyeshadow. I was. You, you know, have like, your sparkle oh, eyeshadow on tonight. I do. I put it on. I was yes. like, no, I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm gonna it's gonna clean make up. your pen I took now. My second shower. <laughs> she said, "I took a second shower today." I think yeah. that's. <laughs> I never do that. That's like a maybe like the third time in my entire life that I've done a second shower. Oh my gosh. Um, but I was showing need, up. I was showing you're up. Showing up. You're showing up. You needed that time though. I not did. not the second shower. No, I did. I did actually. I put the worship music. I put my worship music on. I pray. There's something in I your met, <laughs> I met your your oh, in, in Traverse City. Yeah. Oh, in Traverse City. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that time I did need the second shower. I did. It's like we I don't think I showered in Traverse City. Traverse City is like the second shower. It refreshed you. I went home it to did. get my second. I went home to get my second shower. Yes. I was not refreshed you, from Traverse City. I want it to be clear. This that imposter months of being there was a horrible time in my life. It was when I came. It was just when my parents came and rescued me. Yeah. And, yeah. and God, God used them to do that. But came and got me and brought me home. And it wasn't like oh, all of a sudden everything was good. But it was the beginning of me coming out. And I, I say this all the time. This is the truth. When I think of that time in my life, it feels like it went on for years. It went on for maybe a maximum of like 14 months. It wasn't that long of a time, but it felt like there was so much uh, toxicity in my life at that time that it felt like it was much longer. How long after this, the, the, the rape happened, did, did this happen? When you went away? That, that, okay. Oh, so. well, I, well, I, I didn't go away until probably six months. I, I went to OCC for a while and then I wanted to get out of my house. And so you, I went up north. You yeah. tried creating the own, your own, I, I got this steel yeah. rod and it, yeah. it, it was made of, uh, whatever. Yeah. 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 It was, it was, it was degrading yeah. in you. Now that time was very obvious this time leading up to the, to that, this chunk of 13 years or whatever it was that would, you know, stemmed from church hurt and things going mm -hmm. on right. life, just kind of falling apart. Um, in my Christian life, life mm -hmm. falling apart, I it didn't look that dark. Mm -hmm. I, I showed up at church on Sundays. I did go to some Bible studies. Yes, I would sit there with kind of my hood up and I was quiet, which was not me because I, I was before that leading women's ministries and Bible studies and stuff. So so that those 13 years where I was just kind of going through the motions to make it look like everything mm -hmm. okay, was okay didn't look as dark, but it was just as dark, mm -hmm. but I just smiled and I still laughed and we still did all the things. And, um, but that was, nobody was, nobody knew to rescue me from that. You know, my parents didn't know my husband. You were showing up as the, the, 
okay, perfect, shiny refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or maybe not perfect and shiny, but yeah, it was definitely. At least putting on that putting you weren't it, feeling like sticky, sticky chicken on the It inside. wasn't feeling like, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I was, but I, but I was. You were. That's, I was. That's, yes. That is, that is the point. And, yeah. you know, anything that we're, we're walking through or we're responding or it's that conditioned response, sometimes a conditioned response can come from us in the way that we are processing something. That's yeah. exactly what is happening here. I was talking to a group of women yesterday and I was talking about when you you think you're dealing with something up here but really you have to just keep asking that seven layers of why why okay answer it then why okay then why you go seven layers of why and you get under the ground and that's where you find you yeah. find like it's shame yeah shame is the lowest place shame that be. word oh yeah and it see what it, it brings up something yeah it brings it, it's like you can almost feel it in your body and really when you think of Traverse City in that time when Sam was there. Yeah. The reason it makes you feel the way that you feel it's is shame. is that word. What's yeah. the word that we can because we need to, you know, pray about getting to under the under root and finding that word because that's what we can open our hands and yeah. hand over to God and yeah. say, you know, he he knows. Mm -hmm. He already knows. But it is so healing when we can reveal it and go, okay, this is what I have to hand you. Yeah. Yeah, that word shame. Mm -hmm. That's a trigger word for me. I don't know if it is for other people, but talk, so talk about. I that. don't know. I can't. I don't even know how to describe. I feel like the word shame has been coming up, not just oh, not just in my personal life. I just feel like shame is. I'm just wondering. I get. I maybe what I'm wondering is if the enemy is just really attacking hardcore right now on people and their shame. And maybe he's always doing that, but for me, it feels like right now it's like there's like there's like oil being poured on that shame fire, mm -hmm. all and all areas, and it doesn't it doesn't look like all the typical things, mm -hmm. um, but it just feels like it's really exploding right now. They say that if you if you could describe all your emotions on a ladder, that shame is the lowest, and if it were a dimmer switch on a wall, it's 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 the it's, dim. Of the, it's the most dim. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what I love that we need to, we actually that. need to combat that, you know, like we need to, that's see, that's why, that's why. But exposing it, getting yeah, it out of it from the underground yes. is, the, is the first, one of the first steps. And that's why, that's what fuels me. Like that is, I, I am not going to let the people around me um, get sucked into shame and I'm not going to let the people on the other side of the screen get sucked in, into shame. That's a fuel for me. It's a trigger word and it's a, it's, Puts me in fight mode, mm -hmm. but not in a bad way, not in fix it mode. Just uh, nope, gotta stay, cannot get sucked into this darkness, this depression, this mm -hmm. um, sadness that, and we can be, you can be sad. I can be sad. I'm gonna be sad for a while. And there's nothing wrong with but that. But I can we, still fight. I love that you're saying you can be sad and you will be sad because when people say that they, they can't, they got it, they're not going to be, that's never gonna go. No. Well. No, mm -hmm. I'm not. That's not going to work for me. Jen, this is why, you know, so Jen and I technically met through Barn 45, but it was li literally a year ago Yeah, where we um, were both on um, a spring break trip in Mexico. And we, we, we kind of stumbled and that is God sprinkle. How we yes. were brought together. We were yeah. brought together by a t-shirt that can you I were, be, can I you be work a chapter in your next book? Yeah. Okay. The, the, I won't hold the beach you to of it. It's okay. Don't worry. Absolutely. I just okay. have to, Am I, I gotta get, okay. I gotta try to write, <laughs> grab that cup over there. I want to show you yeah. something. I think it's on there. I hope it's on there. Um, yeah, look, okay. you said that. And I was like, this cup says fueled by Jesus Oh yeah, with sprinkles on it. Yeah. But we technically met, uh, in Mexico and we were having these, uh, morning Bible studies, get togethers, you know, for, uh, just going out real early in the morning. But I remember Jen sitting there <laughs> talking about how she wishes that she could be, you not wishes. She just knew that God had called her to be in women's ministry. I was ministry, wanting to get back into, back into women's ministry. Into women's ministry, but I felt like I was too far gone. Like Yeah, so she's saying that. Like yeah. she's too far gone. Then, and then we're sitting there morning after morning, and I'm looking at her like, Jen, you are in women's ministry. <laughs> you, what is it? It's, you're sitting here ministering to women, pouring into them, and it just comes so natural. You know what, though, Jen? Um, that that happens for many reasons. 
and it won is because you know how to have that steel rod anchored mm-hmm. and you, you know that it's there. Yeah. Even though some days we might feel like we're falling apart, smell like stinky chicken, mm-hmm. but you. Corned beef. Or corned beef. Yeah. And the sauerkraut, that's worse. That's so much What worse. about spoiled sauerkraut? Well, sauerkraut can do a number on the internal. Do you know what? Some, uh, on the inside as well, so. I literally think Jan's gonna Jan's be like Marley. You've said literally, literally too many times. Um, I literally think I have smelly <laughs> sauerkraut in my fridge. We're gonna go look right okay, after this. Right, yes, yeah. but you, they, we people, you, you are able to help, and you do so many people, women, because of where you've been. So he's Romans eight twenty eight and all of the things. And Sam, Sam is a a part of you that is just. You know, she, she's maybe in there going, I, you know, job well done. Yeah. Good and faithful servant. Yeah. She's she's showing up in the way that you minister women, because if you didn't have that darkness, that Sam time of your life, you you wouldn't be able mm-hmm. to. You know, I was saying Jen has young women. She not, she's not only doing the barn on Wednesdays. Her and her husband, Spence, lead something called SNL on Sunday nights at Barn 45. So if you live in Michigan near the Milford area, send your young person, young, young kids. This generation is hungry. Yeah. They are hungry for Jesus and they lead that. And then a month that Sunday night. I'm actually speaking at it this week. Oh I my know. God. I haven't my said girls. it out loud. I just said it out loud for the first time to you oh just now. I knew. And how perfect that this lined up. I know that you're here right now. Yeah. I hope I have my thoughts together a little bit. You have, we, you have your thoughts together and you know what you, this has been amazing because you've been speaking from your heart. Yeah. And, and then on Monday nights, that's Sunday nights, SNL Sunday night lives for the kids. But then Monday night she has how, I mean, what's the, how many girls have you had now at one time? Like a lot of girls on Monday night at your house, like 13 ish. And you know what these young girls, my our girls, um, go there on Monday nights and they love it. They love you. I love them. And, um, they, y- you are able to minister to them and you're able to lead them because of what you've walked through. Thank you. Yeah. God's not wasting any of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thankful for those opportunities and I'm thankful that people trust me to speak into their own, into their lives. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, I definitely want, to be clear that I definitely, that every day outside of that Sunday night, Monday night and Wednesday morning, every day I do take time. And, I, and if you're, if you're if you, if you are feeding into people right now, please, please don't let your tank get empty. Take time, spend time with God every single day. Um, Cause otherwise I would, I would just, I would just run out mm-hmm. of gas for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but I'm, and you I'm, would crumble. I like, would crumble. And like I said, me spending time with God right now is really hard. It's really, I'm, I'm a little bit like, See? I'm not mad as much as I was, but I'm a little bit like, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? But I'm just going to keep opening. I'm just going to keep opening my beautiful yellow Bible. Her yellow oh, Bible. Beautiful. I was with you when you got that. I know. We were I at the Jackie this. Hill Perry yes. conference. I, I, listened to a, I listened to a so lot of um, Jackie Hill Perry. I love uh, yeah, she's one of the people that feed me. But um, would you want me to show them? just my Bible? I just love your Bible. Yeah. You know, I just want to say something about your Bible. Okay, I've got my Bible here. This is not the Bible that I'm using these days. And I, I show it a lot. It's very tattered. Like all, this whole section is out. But I had a hard time letting go of using this Bible because it's so I know you did. So know. precious to me. There's so precious. I had a hard time. We talked about this. Yes. And you were the one, like right around the time when you got that Bible, that your wisdom said uh that god god related to you that there's there are seasons for our bibles yeah i that's so that's something that i do and this has been really actually this week i've realized um that so i i get a new bible not like on a regular schedule but i get a new bible if i see one that really is is kind of Mm -hmm. grabbing me then it's time for new bible season but i'll write at the beginning when i started my bible and then i'll write the end date of it but this will forever be my um my bible um i'm not gonna be able to find it right now but where we lost emmett and so i have some verses in here that i've circled for him um for our family and so this will always be that and i have other my other bibles have been 
Bibles that took me through other seasons and other really happy things and other really sad mm -hmm. things. And, um, but this will, ever, this will forever be the Bible that God used to take me through this very hard season of life. Um, so I love this Bible for so many reasons. Can, can I just I'm not going to want to end this Bible. I can tell you that. Can I just say what I just realized? I've always loved that color. Yeah. Bible. Yeah. It reminds me of you yes. because you're so bright and cheery. Mm. Um, but you guys always, uh, he was referred to as sunshine. And yeah. you just said that this Bible will remind yes. you of this time. And that Bible is the color of sunshine. Yes. He was called, my, mm -hmm. my his mother called, called him sunshine. And that's yeah. so, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I never even put that together. And I see it every Wednesday. Yeah. I never even thought about it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. I'm going to, I'm going to be thinking of it because this is, this is sunshine. It is. And yes. you are too, Jen. Oh, Isn't she sunshine, you. you guys? Yellow is sunshine. Yeah, Jen yeah. just said that too. Um, is there anything that you want? We're, we have a little bit of time and we have a, a fun little question that we're going to, um, we're going to, you're going to pick out of the, the sparkly bag okay. before, before you go, but is okay. there anything else you want to share? Um, I don't think so. I, not that I can think of right. Um, I can think of right now. Okay. I'm going to think about it as soon as we end, we hit end and it'd be like, wait, hit, hit live again. One more thing. Just one more thing. I just yeah. want to say one more thing. Okay, listen, I have to tell you, I have to say this out loud. The other, not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before I was telling the story of like the, my dream and, you know, the yes. story of what happened with Emmett. Mm -hmm. And um, so I watched it back with Spence. Spence and I watched it back. And um, do you have any idea how many times I said, this is my last thing? What? This is what I would say. This is my last thing. Um, I would go, one Oh, more you thing. say that? I would say this like, Oh I, my, I didn't, so I didn't pick it up. Spence was like, is this for real your last thing? <laughs> no, this is the last thing we're going to say. And then yeah, that's it. This is, that's it. I got one more thing. Like this. I was sitting right there with you and I never even. Yeah. Well, you weren't judging me like. I wasn't. Was. I, was, I wasn't. I didn't even pick it up. You're so precious. I Thank you, it. Fran. Oh, wait. Is her name Francie? It is. Isn't that great? Francie. Oh, my gosh. I love that. Yes, it is. Oh. I love that. Oh, and Megan, I will listen to that song. I, I don't think I know it. Um, Megan Tibbetts. I experienced her for the first time when we went to a Bob Goff. Oh, it was just like, it, oh, it was, it was actually, oh, my gosh. It was. The, like the night before we went to Mexico and Megan Tibbetts, you guys, if you don't know who she is, you have to find her. She's unbelievable. You know, our house is generally pretty quiet. And so far there's been a gathering of people. I don't know who they are. And so I'm dying to know what's going on. Somebody is rolling a chair along. Yeah. The way. They're rearranging furniture. Mm, I don't know what's okay. happening. It, but that doesn't happen. So you're doing a sprinkle time. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, before we we draw, Jen draws a question out of here. Um, I just wanted to say that thank you for joining us. If you are on YouTube, would you please subscribe to YouTube? Do you know why I learned this? You have to, first of all, you have to have a free account for YouTube in order to comment. But I believe if you subscribe to my channel, you will then get notification and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications in YouTube. I'm really trying to, I, I don't want to move everybody over to YouTube because I love Facebook, but with YouTube, I just want to encourage you that if you need encouragement to go to my YouTube channel, because there are, there is an arsenal of videos there. There's coffee chats at the cubby hole. There's, there's all sorts of things there. If you need encouragement, just go through and look at the, the title and find Find something that you, would help you feel encouraged. Um, and then also you can go to Marlo at, no, I'm sorry, MarloRutz.com. There is a, uh, a little pop-up that pops up, how convenient. And if you join my mailing list when I do Reveal the Heal workshops or there's a special event, there's going to be special events coming up, whatever it is, you will be notified. That's the best. Because you know what? Facebook went down one time for me. Yes. I was off of Facebook. Yes. It was, it was kind of scary. I remember that. And yeah. I had no way to communicate. And I love to, from the bottom of my heart, pour encouragement and the light of Jesus out. So all those modes of communication are very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, you pick. Okay. Here, smile. We'll take a picture. Okay. Am I putting my thing up or what am I doing? Just, <laughs> do you know, you just, I just caught a glance at you. You look like Mariah Carey. I do. Smile again. You do. I think that Terry Miller looks like Valerie Bertinelli. She does look like doesn't Valerie. she? Yes, she and does. you she look does. like Mariah Carey. I've never seen that till just now. Am I reading this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Want me to read it? Yes. I'll ask you the question. Okay. 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 This is what would the title 
of your autobiography be if it had to be funny? What? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> or <laughs> that would be it. That's the <laughs> That was, that's the title. That is the title. I didn't mean it oh to be. Oh my gosh. I didn't mean it to be. 100%. That, 100%. 100%. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> oh my gosh. That just got me. Oh, it's so funny. That is so quick because I didn't even catch that. Mm. That is the fastest. That is the clock it. That is the fastest. I feel like I should get a second question. I don't know. No. I don't. I don't like That's rough. That is rough. I, I'm the spot. I should you should you send ahead those ahead. I know. I know. I should. I should. I, I should just put all the same question in here, I guess. And just yeah. yeah. Okay. The title of your autobiography would be, are you kidding me? Are you right kidding now? me? Are <laughs> right you now. kidding me right now? Are you, yeah. Oh or, or Jana said one more thing. Yeah, one oh, more yes. Thing. Jan, one more yeah. thing. One more thing. <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. One more thing. <laughs> okay. Jen, Jen, just one more thing. Wait, just one more thing. I'm going to ask you one more question. Okay. What's the most... Oh, I wrote these. I mean, obviously I did, but I wanted you to get this one. Okay. <laughs> What's the most hilarious fashion trend you secretly love and why? Oh, fashion um, trends. Oh, shoot. See, that made me, that reminded me of another thing I liked in your book, shoot, about garbage. I remember that song. What, it, what was it? Um, that song. Oh, Stupid yeah, Girl. Stupid Girl. Yeah, Stupid by Garbage. Yeah, I, I was, I was grunge. You were? I was, was so grunge. Sam grunge. I was you... no, I was yeah, I was so grunge. I was Fun Jennifer facts. Grunge. Yeah, I wasn't in high school. Jennifer I was grunge. prepping. <laughs> I was prepping in high school and then Sam became grunge, but then after I got like well, like I was doing yeah. well, I was preppy grunge and I wore Doc Martens all the time and I wore I was I was I loved gr uh, alternative, I uh, alternative need music. Pictures. We need pictures. Yeah. What was what was your hair? Um I did do the Rachel. I had the Rachel. The Rachel. Yeah. I, I need pictures. Yeah. I wrote, could you please send me pictures so we could put them I in the I can do comments? that. I can do that. I'm going to have to dig some up for sure. I had never heard. That is a grunge band because uh, we played it in the, in the chapter Stupid Girl. If you When you read it, there's a song called Stupid Girl. And she's right. For photos or it didn't happen. I got you. Yes. I got you. Yes. So yeah. we need, we're going to need pictures. Yeah. We have to see pictures. Mini of you. skirts. You chokers. had the Rachel. I, I had the Rachel. Yeah, you I wore was, black. I, I had. I wore a lot of black. Yeah, I was. I was. I was grunge. Oh my gosh. So that is actually, if I could go back, like that, my the the secret fashion. Does it have to be the trend of right now? You know what, guys? I kind of like. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to wear it because, um, you know, I'm 50 and it's wear like. What? Um, I'm going to tell you. My oh, oh, I see. I see. Like my thing. I kind of like the way that some of the girls are dressing right now. Like I don't Half mind. Shirt? I don't mind a little half shirt, like a little, listen, we had, if I could show a little bit of my belly right now, <laughs> if we could, we would, I would what I'm saying. you get a minute, you get a minute in life where you could <laughs> listen, girls, enjoy it before your metabolism. Kicks and you, in. do you know what we yes. said? We needed, we need an episode on menopause because yes, we need that, to do menopause. We need to do menopause. Yeah. Definitely. Half shirt. Half, yeah. Like, or just you like a cute ads. little skirt, like a little cute little thing. Cause you can show you, you can show a little belly without looking trashy. I'm sorry. You can like, there's a way to do it. Like, <laughs> I just think it's cute. It's in style. It's in style. My 20 year old version. I was just talking about my 20 year old version of myself had a powerhouse sweatshirt cut off right about here I love with my it. long hot yes. pink nails. I, I was, I love it. And I'm glad skinny jeans are gone because they hurt my evil. knees. They hurt my knees. Who, whose idea? I have no idea, honestly, but I want to write to them. Thank you for bringing the boot cut back. I love them. Okay. Not only, okay. You know what? They don't call them boot, boot cut. I think they call them something else. They call them happy, happy jeans. Happy. Cause you know what else? They the skinny jeans. Yeah. yeah. You know what else? Low rise jeans, angry jeans. They make me unhappy. Why? Awful. Why? Who, who did it? Why? What, what woman would develop a, a low rise? Um, tip for the night. Here's your tip for the night. American Eagle, they sell next level stretch, high, ultra high rise, and they're amazing. We know where we're going right after they're this. They're amazing. And the stretch stays tight, so it's not like it gets loose and, and like feels yucky. Go get them. That is a helpful gene. It is a, it's a, it's a helpful gene. So it's low rise, very, low rise genes. Yeah. That's no, how don't do saying. that. Don't do that. I was four feet around with my twins. It's not. <laughs> Low rise is nothing but just 
awfulness. It's so mean. Oh my it's gosh. So mean. Oh, I okay. love you. I love you. Thank you Thank so much you for, for being me. here. Thank you so much. Um, there was something else. I was gonna... Oh, you get one of these. What color do you want? I want blue. Blue. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. What is it then? Oh, um, mm -hmm. oh, here, here I'll Let's hold see. it. Okay. It's, oh, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. Be yes. Still. I need that today. That's right. This works for me. Okay, everybody. Well, I think that's all. I, I hope okay. that we don't end this. And I think, oh, there was just one more thing. There was just one more thing. I don't think that's. We will. We will. We totally will. Okay. We're going to go check for smelly sauerkraut and we're going to go. Um, we don't know. We don't know what we're going to do. We love you all. Thank you so much. Oh, love we need to pray. Guys. Pray, oh, pray, pray. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Of course. Okay. Okay. Uh, Father God, I just thank you for this hour. I thank you for this Friday night. I thank you for laughter. I thank Thank you for mm -hmm. honesty. I thank you for the grace on the other side of the screen from the ladies and that just allow us to walk through what we're walking through and don't expect um, anything other than for us to love Jesus and be real, Lord. And I just thank you for everything you're doing um, in Marlo's life. Mm -hmm. I thank you for this thank book. You, I thank you for the cubby hole. I thank you for bringing her to me as a friend and a sister, Lord. And I just pray that you bless her life and her family. And um, I just pray that you give us all a really good weekend, Lord. Mm -hmm. um, even even if we're going through some some massive storms right now, Lord, I pray that you give us things to smile about over the next couple of days. In your precious yes. name, amen. Amen. Thank you so amen. much, Jen. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Love you guys. Okay. Love you all. Okay. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.